So this is slide forty four, and again, you guys did great yesterday on the assignment. Um, we have one more equation that's actually very, very similar. It's actually a specific version of the force equation, so it shouldn't be any problem either. Since you guys did so good on this, uh, the one yesterday. Um, but I said yesterday that gravity is very important because it is one of our forces. And so we're going to talk about it specifically as a force um, and what that means to us. So obviously we know that it's the, the force that pulls objects towards each other. The one video yesterday, uh, the study jam, talked about this and the center of gravity. Um, and a few of you were doing this with your pencils where you, know, you can find the center of gravity of the object by trying to balance it. Obviously a sphere, it's always going to be the very center. So our Earth is a sphere. Right? So that's why we, the way the Earth is pulling everything towards the center, which is pretty convenient because it keeps us and everything intact on the surface of the Earth and then we're not all like floating and flying around. Um, so if you're trying to find the center of gravity of an object that is not a sphere, you know, like with our pencil, you can you know, try to balance it. Now, is my finger right in the middle of the pencil? No. No. Obviously, there's a little bit more mass on the end that has the metal and the eraser, so I have to offset that and be closer to that. Um, so it's not like the dead center, like a sphere would be, um, but you can find the center ba balance, like a gravity. So like right now, my center of gravity is like straight up and down. Well, if I lean to the side, right, I change that center of gravity and I lean so far and if I don't catch myself, so far I've never actually fallen. One of these times I'm gonna get like klutzy and actually fall, which will probably be embarrassing, but putting it out there will probably happen at some point. But usually I'm able to catch myself, which is good, and I realign my center of gravity. But if the center of gravity gets out of whack, right, now I have more mass that's off center. So that becomes my new center of gravity. So something center of gravity isn't always like set, it's kind of like what's its position? Um, and so like, or does it change any? So, um, you know, just realize that it can change as mass changes, as that the center of that mass shifts, well then the center of gravity has to shift as well to kind of accommodate that, right? Um, we learned last year in our non-contact forces unit that gravity is a non-contact force. So it works through that invisible force field. And the idea that it works without touch, um, and so it's kind of one of our, I always call it like the voodoo uh, forces, right? Because it works invisibly, it works without a touch. Um, but definitely we can feel the effects of it, right? So it is one of our major forces that is super important. Everything is exerting a force on everything else. So I'm exerting a force on you. You're exerting a force on me. A table's exerting a force. The floor's exerting, like everything's exerting a force. What is necessary before an object really can feel that force? What does one of the objects have to be? Think of like the earth or the planets. What does one of the objects have to be before you can really feel it? It's got to be in motion. Um, not necessarily, but you're kind of on the right path, though. I like the, the, where you're going with that. that. That's a good, very good guess. Because the planets are steady in motion, so maybe my example threw you off a little. Gravity. What do they have to have before, like, why are we attracted to the Earth? Why do we feel Earth's pull? Gravity is doing it, but we're all exerting gravitational pulls. Why aren't like Kendall and I slamming into each other because our gravitational pull is so strong? We're like, boom. Why does that not happen? What does one of the objects have to have or have to be? Not steady. Great. Massive. Very massive, right? Oh, good. Yeah. You're in. Large. Enormous. So 
So not even like an elephant large or a skyscraper large. Massive. <laughs> so she's the only one that saw it. Or like registered. Good. Massive. So even though we all are exerting this force, we really don't feel it because none of us are massive. We're talking like planetary massive, all right? Okay, and so gravity is a force, so it's gonna obey Newton's second law of force equals mass times acceleration. So here um, is the connection. We've talked about gravity pulling things to the earth. Well, this pull is technically an acceleration, okay? And so that means all things are going to fall to the earth at the same rate. We proved this by looking at those different examples of the feather and the bowling ball. You're like, yeah, well, the feathers fell slower. Uh, they did when there was air resistance working against gravity, but when they sucked the air out of that chamber, they fell equally, right? And so the watermelon and the egg, different masses, but they fell equally because they were being pulled equally and there was no air resistance a difference between the two. So that wasn't, that was kind of a non-factor, right? So we proved that things will get pulled to the earth at the same rate. That's acceleration. And all objects will fall to the earth at a rate of 10 meters per second squared. This is acceleration, this capital A, and this little g is gravity. So the acceleration due to gravity. So basically it's wanting you to know, hey, this is an acceleration and it's a specific type. It's the acceleration that gravity pulls on everything, okay? So without air resistance in that chamber, it would have, those objects, both the feather and the bowling ball would have fallen at exactly 10 meters per second squared, the entire path of their fall, okay? Um, this is a constant on Earth. You might also hear of 9.8. That's kind of more specific. Um, the state of Ohio uses 10 like on their testing sites and like as a given uh, constant. So we can use 10 as well. But just realize, you know, you might see 9.8 and then that's just rounded up to 10, which is nice because 10 is a nice easy number to deal with. We already talked about Aristotle and how, you know, because an object is more massive, most people think it's going to be pulled more quickly or have a greater acceleration. But we know that this is how objects actually fall equally. So if there's no air resistance to affect them, no matter what their masses are, feather or bowling ball, they should fall equally. And we looked at the papers that I dropped. You know, we looked at a lot of different things to try to prove this. Okay. So there's something called terminal velocity. And actually, you guys are going to get to watch a uh, Mythbuster tomorrow on terminal velocity. And there is a point that an object will reach where the, the, um, the rate of, of gravity pulling down is going to be balanced by the air resistance. So remember when we looked at that skydiver, Skydiver um, Interactive, that while the forces were unbalanced, <coughs> while the forces are unbalanced, um, if I change them, right, it's going to keep, let's do this one, forces are unbalanced, it's going to keep accelerating or having a changing velocity. It's not until they're balanced that it goes on cruise control. And so this is called terminal velocity. The velocity that an object will go, it's not going to keep speeding up indefinitely because at some point the air resistance and the pull of gravity or weight are going to balance each other out. And we call that idea terminal velocity. Right. And so, um, you know, an object shouldn't keep accelerating. Um, indefinitely. It'll reach a maximum velocity or maximum speed where it's going to stop and it's going to just kind of be on cruise control at that point. So it's not going to keep speeding up indefinitely, right? So there's going to be a spot where the gravitational force equals air resistance and things will be balanced. Okay, so if we take Newton's second law, 
of force equals mass times acceleration, then weight is a force of gravity. Last year, um, the way that I told you to remember this is that weight has the letter G in it and gravity has the letter G in it, right? So weight is the pull of gravity on an object. So there are different gravitational pulls if you go to different planets. And so that gravitational pull being different will give an object a different weight. So if you go to a different planet um, or the moon, which has a different gravity, then you're going to have a different weight than you do here on Earth. Right? And so that was kind of a big idea that we talked about last year. So hopefully that sounds a little familiar. Um, but weight is technically a force because it is the force of gravity pulling on an object. And so we can take Newton's second law and we can make it more specific. Where weight is the force, mass is still just mass, and then acceleration is technically the acceleration due to gravity. So if we're, we're basically just substituting the weight for force and acceleration of gravity for the generic acceleration. So it's just a more specific version of his second law. Okay. Um, and so since acceleration due to gravity is 10, most of the time it's just weight equals mass times 10. Now, the only time this would be different is if you, like the problem says something like they're in a simulation. It, or gravity is, you know, one-sixth of what it is on Earth, or you're on a different planet, and it gives you that gravitational acceleration. So it would have to tell you specifically. So sometimes with these problems, people are like, I'm short a piece of information, like I don't have enough. Well, we know that acceleration due to gravity is a constant. It is a given value, so a lot of times it's not going to come right out and say, hey, gravity is 10 meters per second squared. At this point, they're going to expect you to know that. All right, that is an important constant to understand. All right, so acceleration due to gravity is 10, so that means if we use that in our equation, weight equals mass times 10. And sometimes it's nice to try to understand what this means, because we don't really understand, like, what, what comparison do we have for a newton? Well, it's actually, for every newton, it's 0.22 of a pound. So we can multiply the Newtons by 0.22, and that will let us know in kind of our English or US customary um, uh, units what is something's weight, so that it makes, gives us a little bit more meaning. All right, so if you look at this picture, um, the Earth has gravity that is six times as great as the moon's, um, and so the gravity here is a lot less. So the mass is 120 kilograms. That doesn't change, because mass is what makes something up. Right. So nothing is changing mass-wise, but the weight is going to be that mass times 10, so it's 1,200 newtons. Here, the weight is only 200 because the moon's gravity, I believe, is one-sixth what it is here on Earth. So um, 120 times the acceleration on the moon will give you a newton weight of 200 newtons. Um, and so here's our second equation. Weight equals mass, basically, times gravity, which is the acceleration due to gravity. So the only thing that makes this tricky is that there's a lot of different um, abbreviations. So force of gravity um, can be substituted for weight. Gravity can be uh, substituted for acceleration due to gravity. So there's just a lot of like substitutions, and so sometimes that gets confusing. So we'll look at that a little bit more in detail on Monday. Um, but just know that weight is our force, mass is still mass, and gravity is our acceleration. All right, and so there's a lot of substitutions that can happen, but it'll make sense as we start to kind of get into it. So we could also have force of gravity equals mass times acceleration of gravity, or capital F for force, little g for gravity, mass times big A for acceleration, little g for gravity. So um, again, I don't choose this where there's like multiple, two or three different ways to represent all of these different variables. I get that that can be confusing, but I will always have it very clear like what your options are and then it's going to just be up to you to be able to look at this and be like, oh, okay, force of gravity is also equal to weight. Um, acceleration of gravity can also just be called gravity. So I'll have it there for you. It's just making sure that you're able to look at that and use it. And so weight is measured in newtons, which we know the newton is a kilogram times a meter per second squared. And so that's not affected because acceleration is still 
and, and gravity is still measured in, in that, so we're good there. And mass is still going to be kilograms. And our constant for gravity is 10, which is our acceleration. So typically we're going to be able just to plug that in for our acceleration due to gravity and make that 10. And so unless the problem specifically states that gravity is something different, it is safe to assume that it is 10 meters per second squared. So even if it doesn't come right out and say it, we can assume it. Okay, so here is just a little practice problem. It says, given the following information, find the weight of the average American male. When I hear weight, I realize that that is a force of gravity pulling on an object, so I can use my force equals mass times acceleration to, to figure this out. So according to the Center for Health Statistics, the average mass of an adult male is 86 kilograms, and so we want to determine what the weight of this individual would be on the Earth and on the Moon. Okay, so on Earth, let's see what we know. Mass is 86 kilograms. Acceleration due to gravity um, is going to be 10 meters per second squared. The problem didn't say it, but we know it because that's a constant. And then we know that the force of gravity is weight, right? So if we want to find our weight, we just take our mass times our gravity, which is 10. So notice how I say weight or force of gravity. And so we just plug in our mass of 86 times our gravity or acceleration of 10, and we get 860 newtons. To know what this is in pounds, let's convert it um, by 0.22. And so 189.2 is considered the average American weight. Now, the moon. Same equation, same mass, but now the acceleration is 1 6th of 10, which is 1.63 meters per second squared. So it's much smaller pull that the Earth, or excuse me, that the Moon is exerting to accelerate something towards it. 1.63 compared to 10 here on Earth. So we do that multiplication and end up with 140.2 newtons, convert it to pounds, multiply by 0.22, and we get 30.8 pounds. So we use weight and mass incorrectly all the time. Um, it's one of those things, kind of like speed and velocity, that we're not specific about in our everyday conversations. Uh, we say weight for everything. So technically, when you are going to a weigh-in for wrestling, should be a mass in. Finding your mass, right? Because gravity's not changing. So the only time your your mass is changing drastically. So obviously, we all grow. Like we all started as babies, and now we're I'm a full-grown adult, you guys are getting close, right? So we add, I get, we add to our mass, like we get taller, now my only option is bigger or maybe smaller, right? So we can change our mass slowly over time. But to make a drastic change in mass, there's only two examples that I've ever been able to think of. Somebody who gets something amputated, which is not a good example, right? So instantly, bam, their mass changes no longer have an arm. That's going to change your overall mass of your body. The other example, does anybody remember from last year um, that I had in eighth grade um, that there, a woman's mass could change pretty instantly? Anybody remember that I had? Well, I had a couple of you in here. One of you? I got, I got an idea. You have an idea? If you had a baby. Yes. The woman gives birth, one minute the baby's in there, one minute the baby's not. That changes your mass pretty instantly. Okay, but that's gonna be a slow, and I get it, it will adjust. So we all kind of float a couple, three pounds a day, like that's why you know, like you weigh in in the morning, you're gonna be lighter than at, at night. So I get that it, there can be a lot of things that help us gain weight or help us lose weight, but it's a slower process, a pound here and there, right? it's not going to be instant. The instant way that your mass can change is something get amputated or a woman delivers a baby. I Never in all the years has anybody been able to come up with another example of when your mass is changing. Like, you know, significantly, like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pounds at a time. 
right? If I lose an arm, I don't know exactly how much an arm weighs, but I I'm losing some of that, right? That's changing my overall body mass. Um, and so mass is gonna stay consistent whether I'm on the earth or whether I'm on the moon, doesn't matter. When I go to another planet or to the moon, my weight is going to change. I go from 30.8 pounds to 189.2. So if I need to gain weight, bulk up for football, right? Um, so I'm really not changing my weight. I'm changing my mass. Mass is what makes me up. So again, we use it incorrectly all the time. Um, and just understand specifically for science, weight is the pull of gravity. So it, it affects your mass. It's mass times gravity. That's what gives you your weight. But just understand, like, you know, your weight can change. All I have to do is go to the moon and bam, I'm on a big diet plan, right? Go from 189 to 30 pounds, right? Did my mass change? No, I'm the exact same size as I was, unless something got amputated or I delivered a baby, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and so uh, this kind of, I got ahead of myself, but if the same astronaut is on the Earth and their moon, we know that their weights are going to be drastically different. 1,200 newtons versus 200 newtons. I don't see where this astronaut has delivered a baby or lost some kind of appendage. They, the astronaut looks intact in both places, so the mass is the same, but the weight is different because gravity is different. So really, it's gravity that's affecting an object's weight. Mass is going to stay the same. Echo, you had a great point. Obviously, people do change what makes them up. You can bulk up, you can lose weight. See, and again, losing weight is not really accurate. You're losing mass. You're losing what makes up you. So just kind of keep that in mind. So again, our everyday language makes this a little bit more tricky for our science definition. But we know mass of an object is going to stay the same wherever, but its weight is what can change. And so the moon has much less um, on the moon, there's less mass. Oh, excuse me, the moon itself has less mass, which is why it pulls with a weaker gravitational strength. Um, so the bigger the planet, the more it pulls. And so the Earth is much bigger, so it has a greater gravitational pull. Jupiter has um, a much greater pull than the Earth. And so it's much larger, so it has a greater pull. So the massiveness or the mass of the object itself determines the gravitational pull, which is why our gravitational pull that we're exerting on each other is basically non-existent because like we can't feel it, it's so small. Um, but the Earth has bigger pull than the Moon because the Earth is bigger. Mass of the um, objects affected is staying the same, but the weight of the object is different. Right. Um, and so again, think back, weight has the word G in it and gravity has the word G in it. So weight is the one that is going to be affected by an object's gravity. So again, on Earth, we're all affected by the same gravity. It would be like in a simulation or visiting a different planet or um, in the international space system where it's a microgravity environment where there's basically um, very minimal gravity um, that things would be... Um, affecting the weight because of the gravitational pull being different. Okay, um, some videos.